Seward is considered one of the crown jewels of Alaska. Located on Resurrection Bay, a fjord of the Gulf of Alaska, it's the gateway to the Kenai National Park. The city is named after former Secretary of State William H. Seward, who orchestrated the United States purchase of Alaska from the Russian Empire in 1867. Seward is the historical starting point of the Iditarod Trail. The serene harbor we see today has a disastrous history. The 1964 earthquake completely destroyed the harbor and many buildings nearby. These old photos show the town's early life. Seward has an amazing outside art display with spectacular scenes representative of the area. The Alaska earthquake of March 27, 1964 began at 6.36 p.m. The strong ground motion in Seward lasted three to four minutes. During the shaking, a strip of land 50 feet by 400 feet along the waterfront slid into Resurrection Bay, creating a tsunami wave. The tsunami wave caused tremendous damage and fire from the burning oil tanks added to the destruction. Let's look at more murals and historic buildings in town. On day five, we start the day with a visit to Exit Glacier, just 12 miles from Seward. It served as the exit point for the first recorded crossing of the Harding Ice Field in 1968. How cold, how cold is it? Very cold. <laughs> The Harding Ice Field is a remnant of the great ice sheet that covered this part of Alaska 10,000 years ago. It's still at work feeding nearly 40 glaciers that spill down in all directions. Meanwhile, back at the Seward Fish Pier, the halibut catch of the day is on display. Here we see a large halibut being weighed. Looks like around 85 pounds. In the afternoon, we board a modern catamaran vessel for a smooth ride to Ayalic Bay and the Ayalic Glacier. The sea otter is considered the party animal of the sea. Their intelligent, rambunctious, and curious behavior make them among the cutest animals around. They can carry a small stone and a fold of skin under each arm, 
to use as a tool to crack open crab shells and mussel shells. As we sail out of Resurrection Bay, Bear Glacier comes into view. The land-based glacier now has a small lake at its base, where the icebergs accumulate and melt. Bald eagle coming right in front of us, right in front of Bear Glacier. Wow, that's cool. The entrance to Ayalik Bay is a maze of spectacular glacier-carved rock formations. The steep walls of these rock formations allows the captain to sail through such a narrow passage with no worries. The water depth here is 600 feet. Puffins spend most of their lives at sea, but between May and September, they can be seen in rookeries along the rocky coast. As we get into the open waters, the captain explains that this area is where three ocean currents meet, and the wave action is usually rough on passengers. Today we are fortunate to find calm seas. Doll sheep can be found clinging to the sides of impossibly steep cliffs. Their specially shaped hooves allow them to go where predators can't go. Entering Ialic Bay, we can see the majestic mountains in the distance and the Holgate Glacier on the left. Only 15 miles from Seward, the Ayalik Glacier is the largest glacier in Ayalik Bay. It is located in the Kenai Fjord National Park. One and a half miles wide and three and a half miles long, this impressive glacier's front wall is hundreds of feet high.
Glacial ice reflects the blue colors of the light spectrum. The longer the path light travels in the ice, the bluer it appears. As we get closer to the glacier's front wall, we can see hundreds of stellar sea lions resting on the ice flows created by the glacier. On our way back to Seward, the captain will navigate close to the rocky coastline, looking for the stellar sea lions that are often found here. A stellar sea lion is the largest of the eared seals. The beach master can weigh as much as 2,400 pounds and be 11 feet in length. A glacier is a moving river of ice. As glaciers move, they bring all the rocks and debris along. Most of that rock and debris ends up being pushed to the front of the glacier, but some of it gets pushed to the edges. So when two glaciers meet, they have a distinctive black line. Bear Glacier is not just one glacier, but three. <laughs> 